What are you doing, Caroline? Caroline. What? What are you doing? Uh, I'm cleaning it up. You're cleaning it up? That's good. Thank you for being such a big helper. All right, well, I'll just show you guys real quick. I've been advancing on the siding a little bit, on the interior siding. And now the goats have been using this barn space. I think I mentioned it, but they've been using this space as a dry shelter now that I got the roof on. So we've got to put some plywood on the floor here, some treated ply. You can see the floor looks all wet. That's all just from where they peed. But I went ahead just now, raked all the bedding over here into a pile and uh, swept it clean. I'm gonna try to get as clean as I can as far as just no poop or debris really. These bottom boards aren't pressure treated. So they will be able to breathe. You can see there's cracks. They'll be able to breathe on the bottom side. Um, but I'm gonna throw down pressure treated plywood here on top of it as the, kind of the final decking. Um, so in the future, when we have goats, we're gonna have three stalls across the back here, breeding stalls or birthing stalls. So when they pee and everything else, at least it's gonna be on a pressure treated floor, not just old regular wood floor. So anyway, swept out this whole corner. I'm gonna get the first four by eight sheet of plywood thrown down in here. And then probably actually shovel a lot of this up and throw it back on top of the newly laid plywood just to kind of move it out of the way and then we'll sweep and clean out that corner because again the plywood slips underneath the siding so we'll slip that corner in and then we'll have a gap here in the middle and we'll have to trim that board just a little bit um, and then we'll drop it in as kind of a keyway sort of piece um, and then again that's just to get that half done and then I won't do the actual flooring on this half until this wall board here is on and what goes behind the door so anyway I was just showing you this is kind of the prep work I'm starting to get ready to lay a piece of the floor. So we're going to drop this first piece in and then go from there and try to get some flooring down. Okay, so just like that, <laughs> slipped it in underneath the edge and uh, just tacked it down with a couple of nails. Nailed down, not screwed. Um, it's nailed down enough that it doesn't really have any reason to warp or pull. It may try to, but I don't think it will. But nailed down, not screwed. If I ever have to, the idea too is that this, if it starts to rot, we can take it up and replace it. It is kind of the long-term plan i don't think this shed will last that long that we'll ever end up replacing the floor probably end up just tearing down the whole barn but that's why nailed not screwed because screws you may not be able to back them back out later they'll corrode and break so nailed down you can see how bad the bow is in the floor now that makes that real obvious so that piece of that bottom row of siding is level you can see how much gap there is underneath of it there to where it's flush at the corner so that's unfortunate but the whole, this whole foundation of this barn did that. We could see it before we ever put up the first wall. You could see that the floor had sagged in the middle. My fault for really building no real foundation at all. I just put it up on pavers and as piers. So those probably sunk in the mud. Anyway, first part of the floor is down. So now I'm gonna shovel all this crap onto it so that I can clean out the rest of that really, really well. And then we'll get the next two pieces down. Well, I suppose that'll be my first go at a, a sort of farmhouse trim window frame and hopefully nobody will bash me here for doing it wrong because I just kind of was winging it. My wife had said she wanted to have this you know, windowsill kind of stick out so she could set a drink up here or set some tools up there and that makes sense. So I just used a one by four and just said well that's, that sticks out about an inch. Well then our trim underneath is seven eighths as is this. So actually it, it um, pretty well flushes up. It doesn't really overhang that, but it does add an inch to what was the window sill. So you actually get a decent little sill and it doesn't protrude beyond the main of the window. Um, she had said she had seen that people build a, a box that's all this dimension. So this is two and a half inches and they put that all the way around the inside and then they put this face frame on and set the whole thing up all at once, which would make sense for kind of squaring it up, shimming it up, making it all true. I built this one in place because nothing about this little shed is square. And so I knew that trying to build it all on the floor and then stand it up probably wouldn't go well. Um, but I think it's fine, but I actually, I think I like the way I did it better here because I gained this inch. If I had done like she said with that two and a half piece there, her windowsill would be, um, well, you know what, it, it would have been the same size, but you would have seen a, this this sort of seam here you would have seen that right here on the windowsill and I didn't want that I wanted this to protect this board if it could and it, and it is so this works okay um, 
I had actually nailed this windowsill in first, not really thinking. And so it's actually underneath of this board and then I notched it back out right here for this board to come down beside it. So the next one I do on that window, I'll just know I'll put in my two sideboards first, run them the full height and then cut this one in so it's a tight fit on the bottom for the sill and then everything will work. So like I said, I kind of started nailing pieces up and then I was like, oh shoot, that's not right. You know, let me figure this out. But anyway, one done. Um, and yeah, I'm super happy with it. It, it. it went better than I expected actually. It just was slow because I had to, of course, go and do each piece one at a time. I'm trying to get the sun to stop glaring so you guys can see it. Um, but yeah, got that one done. I'm going to move over and I guess try to work on this one, maybe get it done hopefully before dinner. Uh, and then I, with those two windows done, then I can frame up the rest of this wall. That's really my goal. Um, yeah, I want to get this wall done because I can get this wall done already and I can get that little wall done. So yeah, the windows are just what's slowing me down and I'm stalling and I'm avoiding doing it. So I just figured I had to get in here and get after it. Okay, so a little update here. Just to kind of show you how, I think I explained it early in the video, but this was our goal for today was to get the two full sheets down and then this kind of key in between. We had to, we cut it off at five foot for now just since this post is in the way. This post is temporary. Ultimately, there'll be one about here and one about here instead. So there'll be two posts that go up because again, there'll be a, a barn stall roughly, roughly kind of right along the seam of the plywood really. Uh, so we'll get those two up and then we'll pull this one out and then we'll put that last key down So that's the plan with that. We're thinking maybe this Scrap here that we cut off of there. We might actually be able to go ahead and throw in here And then there's a little strip that we had to rip off of this one. That's about seven inches That may be enough to fill that last little gap. So we're gonna uh, follow along with to grab that We're gonna see if it all measures out. We might be able to go ahead and finish out this corner um if we can while we got the scrap so i uh, just want to show you that little bit well, let's tinker with it here and we'll let you know what we get all right the next saga as part of this little goat barn actually buttoning up and closing up the <coughs> soffits and the eaves so a bit of a learning experience here like usual i originally put up that top piece of trim and spaced it down for half inch um eave material and then I went ahead and went with quarter inch instead because due to the size of the overhang up here in my gables, half inch would have shown. This, this outer lip here barely hangs down a half an inch um, or three eighths. So I had to go with quarter in order for it to actually go up in there and stay protected and be able to you know, caulk it and see it. Otherwise it would have been sticking down. You would have seen a, a, a raw edge of, of plywood. So I went with quarter, just decided to go with quarter all the way around. Uh, and you can see I had to go in multiple pieces here. Mostly, yeah, I could have went ahead and gone with like a full eight foot piece, but just working up overhead and trying to fight with all the little angles and things not being square, I figured it was easier just to go with more like four foot pieces. So it worked out, but of course you can see I've got a great big gap up here now. It looks like crap. Um, so what I'll have to do is go through and put another piece of trim right along here to just kind of close that up a little bit. Um, just like a one by two, just something to close that big gap. It's too big to fill with caulk. So, yay, I'll get to do that. But it's the usual muddy, sloppy mess, and I'm out here tromping around in it just trying to get it done. I've at least got this side done, so I don't know if you would say that's a quarter or consider it more than a quarter. These are, are higher, longer, but they're pretty straightforward, just a quick, straight, skinny uh, piece so maybe they won't be as difficult I don't know uh, and, and I've gapped this right here this is gapped down just a little bit to where that that board will you know come in on top of it um, and then be able to caulk all the corners and everything so yeah looks pretty crappy um, I'm really not proud of it but you know the long and short of it is I'm still fighting because I didn't get it square in the first place so if I had just gotten it square gotten it right from the beginning all this would have been a lot easier but you know i was just thinking it through this morning talking to my wife and it was like we built this little floor frame uh, and you guys saw how it looked for so long and pretty much as soon as it started sagging and i realized it wasn't going to be level or square i was like i'll oh, screw up the whole barn's the whole barn screwed uh you know maybe i should have put some effort into fixing it back then probably should have but i just wanted to get it done because i've spent like everything else i've been working on this on and off for months and uh yeah still not done but getting close we've got baby goats due in less than a month 
So I gotta get it fixed, gotta get it finished. I mean, it's weather tight now, water tight, so we'll be fine. But I'd like to go ahead and get it closed up to where it's actually, you know, feels like it's done and doesn't have huge gaps and holes in the wall all over the place. So anyway, yeah, still pecking away at the soffit. I'll uh, give you some little updates here as it goes along. Now, would you look at this? It's gonna fit, but look, we swept all that out, cleaned it out, and these fools, bet it was you, get in here and make a mess right there. They're all in here. They all just think they need to hang out. They need to be part of the action. These fool goats, I tell you, they're fun, but man, they just, they're just hanging out. Just like to get in the way, it's what they do. So now I gotta sweep that up, but I got my piece cut here, and it's gonna work out perfectly. That we basically no scraps. That's super cool. I, I'm excited when I don't have waste. I'm gonna throw them down here, I'll show you how she looks. All right, so I got the second window done. This one went a little better. Uh, it looks a little better, uh, except for this upset because this bottom board is like an inch thick and this one's closer to a half. That's just me grabbing boards off the pile and using them. But anyway, I took what I was saying, how my wife had said she saw people, you know, kind of frame it up and then stuck them in. I did that for this bottom and for this top. So there's actually no shims underneath of this board because it was, it was a solid inch. So what I did was I cut this one and this one at the same time, nailed them together on the floor, and you can see I just nailed a ton right here on this windowsill, and then set the whole thing in and nailed here. So again, if I took a hammer and beat on this, I could bend that down, but that should never happen. It's a windowsill, so. Anyway, I did that on the bottom and on the top. That made it be a much more seamless install. I also installed these two sideboards there and there. I can't even see my phone, the sun's about first and then and then did this one so I didn't have to notch this one like I did on this one over here I had to I had to notch it out which it's not really easy to tell but it actually goes underneath there and then it's not so anyway yeah second window went a lot better uh, third and fourth should go better as well now that I kind of got her figured out but at least two are done so now I can finish siding up this whole wall and I just put that top piece of trim up there on the top that top board last board is up there so that whole back wall's done. So we're making progress. Just figured I'll mention this here on how I'm having to box out these corners. It's the first I've ever done this. Well, like most everything on this project, first I've ever done this part of the framing and trim work. But you see on, on the, on the uh, right hand end here, it's got a flat nose and then it tapers up and then it flattens off again just because that's, I don't have any um, boards wider than that five and a half. I didn't saw out anything that was seven eighths thick, wider than five and a half. So what I have to do is, of course, I have to measure all that out and figure it out and then cut it. But what, when I do, I'm left with this, this strip, which I've already cut down, but it's the basically the negative of this wedge right here that I've taken off and it fits to go right in like that. So I just have to trim it down to size. So that actually, it stacks up. I've got a little piece right behind. There's the end of a two by four that I can tack into. And then I'll actually nail uh, right here on the end, I'll nail into the back pieces of trim, which I don't know what you call them, but it'd be like these two pieces right here. So I put those up, nail those into the two by four, and then face nail this piece of the trim right into them. So you can see how it boxes out, how it looks when it's done. I mean, it looks really good, I think. Looks like it should anyway. Uh, well, it doesn't look great, you know, because it, that board warped is what happened there. That board twisted out. That's why there's that lip. But as far as the actual boxing out, it looks really nice and neat. Um, so just trying to get the rest of that done. And then I'll start, once I get this corner boxed out here, then I'll be able to bring the rest of this gable on down and I'll be able to do that soffit here, that eave, all the way over to the other side. I've got one more corner. I've got the opposite corner from here the southeast corner, I've got to get it boxed in and then I'll be able to finish out all of the gay board in the time. Yeah, in a minute. Okay, well, um, finally got the goat barn floor done. You guys can see obviously the difference in how long it's taken me. There are the pieces that are well stained and dirtied up and peed all over or the ones I originally put down in a hurry. Uh, with the hope and thought that we were going to build the first pins back there and then I would patch these up later. But, ended up not needing the pins as you guys learned from the, uh, the tragic goat loss that we had. Uh, but anyway, figured I better get in here and get it finally finished up. I had to go back to the store and get two more sheets of plywood. 
I ended up using one and a half, so I had to get two, obviously. Um, but got it all patched up. So, you know, I'd done the original over there, and then I came in and I got this one under the door, which sucked. It was just really hard to cut it. Nothing was square. I ended up with a little bit of an extra groove I don't like, but it is what it is. And then I cut this one to slide in, and then I dropped this last one in as kind of a key. I cut it, you know, scribed it all the fit. <laughs> Hey, 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 take the broom. Take the broom. It's a bedroom. No, you take the broom. She brought the shovel, didn't she? Give her back the shovel. I'm drinking the sock. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Mayor, if you want something, take the broom, honey. So, yeah, anyway, just had to scribe the last piece in, uh, drop it in the fit, nail it down. So, now this is all done. The next step in here will be the stall layout. We decided to go with two stalls instead of three. So there'll be one here on the center line. It'll be a two by four nailed to the floor, just like how this was laying, but nailed to the floor. It'll come out here and it'll be, it'll serve as the um, toe nailer for this ridge pole, which I had to move this one, right? The main ridge pole was right here. Um, so I had to move it over so that I could get this piece down. So this stub will come out. It'll serve as the toenail for the ridge pole. And then we'll do, the stalls actually won't come all the way out that depth. They'll be more like back here. Uh, about four or five feet instead of a six foot center uh, distance. So this pole will stick out a little bit on its own, but that'll be okay. It'll it'll give us more. It, you know, it'll it'll be here, but it won't really be all out <coughs> in the space. So the stalls will sit back a little bit. So we'll have two by fours along the floor as well, just for like the baseline, and then we'll we'll just stick frame up, install walls on, and hang some little gates. Anyway, floor's done. Thankfully. Um, now at least I can shovel it out a little easier without having all sorts of burrs and bits. And Oh, I suppose I ought to shut the door and keep the goats out of here because they're not doing any favors. 